Hello and welcome to this episode with me, your host, Dallin Haas, and this is the Haas Federal Advisors YouTube channel and podcast. Thank you for spending some time investing in yourself, in your retirement, in your future by being here. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. We have an incredible community here, and I think you'll find a great place to learn, to improve yourself, and to improve your retirement, to improve your comfort level and your competence level with the future. Making, making sure you can feel comfortable and confident moving into retirement with ease. So today we are talking about survivor benefits. And if you're not familiar with survivor benefits, let me fill you in. So when I say survivor benefits, basically what that means is when you retire, on your retirement application, they say, hey, if you were to pass away, how much of your pension would you like your spouse to get? Okay, so basically you pass away first, how much of your pension, your FERS pension, is your spouse going to continue to receive once you're no longer around? That's what I'm talking about when I say survivor benefits. Now, this decision is crucial, 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 because often this can be the difference maker between a comfortable retirement for you and your spouse and maybe a little stressful one. So getting this right, again, makes a huge difference for you and especially your spouse. And for you, knowing that you're taking good care of your spouse makes a huge difference. Okay, so what are the options? Let's start there. There are three options when it comes to survivor benefits, okay? And the reason this is a big question is because it's not free to leave a survivor benefit, right? Most people say, hey, I'll leave as much as I possibly can, but it's not free, so let's start there. The first option is, of course, you don't have to leave a survivor benefit. You can elect to leave 0% of your pension to your spouse if you were to pass away first, and it costs you zero, right? It's free, but you don't leave them anything, okay? Next, you can leave 25% of your pension for them once you pass away, but it's gonna cost you 5% of your pension while you're both alive, okay? So it costs you 5% and you leave 25%, okay? The third option, and it's called full survivor benefits, is you leave 50% of your pension to them, but it costs you 10% of your pension while you're both alive, right? So it costs you 10, it leaves them 50%. So when I say full survivor benefits, it doesn't actually leave 100% of your pension, it leaves 50%, that's just the largest option. And when I say partial survivor benefits, or when you read that online, and this is for FERS, Federal Employees, not CSRS, when you see partial, they're talking about 25% of your pension is what you're leaving, and it's gonna cost you 5%. Okay, so those are the three different options. Now, before we get farther than that, there is a huge, huge, huge thing that you have to know when it comes to survivor benefits and how it's integrated with your health insurance, FEHP. So if you don't elect a survivor benefit for your spouse, if you elect zero, they get nothing. If you were to pass away first, they are no longer eligible to continue on your health insurance if you pass away. Okay, because they no longer are receiving a pension from the government. So they're no longer eligible to stay on, the, on your FEHB. That, that little fact makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, so with that being said, for most federal employees, it becomes a no-brainer to elect at least a partial survivor benefit, if not the full one. Okay, now... The instances where someone might still not elect any survivor benefit is a pretty common one if you and your spouse are federal employees and both of you are eligible for FEHB on your own working record. You're both eligible for an immediate retirement and you both have it. Well, you might not need it for FEHB because you're both eligible on your own record. So if one of you passes away, you can just start it off up on your own record, right? Of course, there's different nuances and rules for that as well, but it's very much part of the planning process of, hey, you probably don't need it for that purpose. You may want it for income purposes, and that's what, it, what that is exactly what we're about to get into, is, hey, there's two reasons why you wanna leave a survivor benefit for your spouse. The first, health insurance, for them to keep it after you pass away. Second, income, okay? These are the two reasons, health insurance or income. Basically, if you were to pass away, 
Do they have enough income to continue their standards of living, to have a comfortable retirement without you and without the income that's connected with you? And if not, if they're not going to be comfortable with just a partial survivor benefit, then they may need the full survivor benefit, right? And the way to kind of figure that is you got to think through every type of retirement income that you're going to have. Okay, you got to look at your social security. You got to look at your spouse's social security and say, hey, if I pass away, how much is left? And in general, the higher of both of your benefits is what's going to continue on. So, for example, let's say your social security benefit is three grand a month. Okay, let's say your spouse's is two thousand a month. If you were to pass away, they would continue receiving your benefit because it's a higher amount. If their amount was higher, then they just keep receiving their amount. That's generally how it works for Social Security and survivor benefits for Social Security. But again, there's nuances, but in general, that's how it works. Okay, so look at Social Security. Okay, and of course, many of you listening aren't retired yet, are not taking Social Security yet. Look at your statements for Social Security and say, okay, what are things estimated to be? Right? Start there. What other income do you have? Do you have a military retirement? Do you have VA disability? What of those, if any percentage of those, is going to continue on, right? Because oftentimes, only a very small part or none of those types of income are going to continue on. Do you have a pension from another job? Do you have rental income? Do you have a TSP, right? Is your beneficiary your spouse? It should be most of the time, right? Sometimes it's not, but often it is. What other investments do you have? Is your beneficiary your spouse, right? What other things do you have that will go to your spouse to aid in their retirement, right? These are the things to think about. Once you kind of run those numbers, say, hey, they're going to have $4,000 a month of income when I'm not around. Is that enough? And if not, then maybe you want to elect the full survivor benefit, right? Because this is the income component of this Thing. Now, you may be wondering, hey, why are, you, why are we even talking about this? Shouldn't we all kind of default to say, hey, I'll give my spouse the full survivor benefit, no questions asked, it's just the safer option? Well, potentially, right? But it does cost something, right? And I view the survivor benefits as insurance, right? You may think that kind of sounds weird, but think about it. With a survivor benefit, you pay premiums every month. Every, every time you get a pension in retirement, you pay a, a percentage of your, of your pension, right? It goes towards this thing in the future. And so you pay premiums every month for a potential benefit later. And if that potential benefit is crucial for your spouse's comfort in retirement, then awesome, take it, right? I don't want to discourage you from taking a full survivor benefit if that's what you want to do. All I'm saying is, hey, it doesn't always make sense. Maybe there's better ways to use that money. Maybe you run the numbers and say, hey, even without this full survivor benefit, even with the partial, my spouse is going to have a very, very comfortable retirement. Well, in that case, is it worth spending 10% of your pension every pay, every, every month in retirement for this benefit that you don't need, right? Just like extra life insurance, where some people may want extra life insurance because it makes them feel a little more secure, and that's great, right? I'm not saying don't, I'm saying what's important to you? Do you want extra coverage? Um, and I'm not saying the full, um, the full survivor benefit is, is extra for everybody. Some, for some people, it is very, very, very much needed, but not for everyone. And so that's why I made this video and this podcast for you to think twice. Say, hey, what are my options? And what's the best place to allocate my money so that for me and my spouse and my situation, my family, that it makes sense, right? That's what we talk about here at this channel all the time. Say, hey, Let's dig into these topics so that you can start applying it for your life and not just kind of stick to rules of thumb that don't always make sense, right? So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that gave you more insight into survivor benefits and how it acts like insurance. And if you need it, awesome. Please, please use it. If not, maybe you can just enjoy that money, right, when you're both alive. So something to think about, food for thought, right? If you have any topics, any questions that you'd love for us to cover here on this show, there is a link in the description below. You can submit questions, and this is where I get a lot of the ideas for my content, for the stuff for you guys, where every Saturday I do a QA, and a I answer your questions that I get from that submission box, so please, please reach out, please submit a question, and um, it definitely makes this content more applicable 
to you as a federal employee. So, I hope that was helpful. Have an incredible rest of your day. I'll see you next time.